the cognitive computation group is famous for liberating large language models and making them uncensored using the famous dolphin dataset. In this video, I want to show you how you can take one of these models and deploy them on a web server, which enables you to access it from anywhere. And you can also make it accessible to other users. For inference, we're going to be using an open source package called VLLM that gives you much higher throughput for LLM inference compared to other packages such as Hugging Face TGI or Transformers. We also need a cloud instance that will enable multiple users to access our LLM. For that, we're going to be using RunPod, who are also the sponsor of this video. RunPod is a cloud platform that you can use to train, deploy, and scale AI models. There are a number of different GPU options available. So you can spin up on-demand GPUs with GPU Cloud and scale ML inferences with serverless. We will use Chainlet to create a UI for our chatbot. The UI is going to be running locally, whereas it's going to be interacting with the model hosted on RunPod. The instructions I'm about to show you will work for any model hosted on Hugging Face. For this example, I'm going to be using a Dolphin 2.9 Llama 3 8 billion model. I'm not using the latest 3.1 because it has some repetition issues. I'll show you how you can host this model on a on-demand GPU, as well as how to set this up on a serverless API endpoint. The amount of VRAM we will need is dependent on the size of the model, which is 8 billion model in this case. If you were to deploy this in 16 bits, we'll probably need about 16 gigabytes of VRAM. If we use a lower quantization, we will need less VRAM, but it also is going to impact the performance of the model. So in run pod, when you sign up, click on pods, then click on deploy a pod. You can see there are a number of different GPU instances that are available. We need at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So in order to be on the safe side, you can either select RTX 1490 or RTX 3090, which is the previous generation of the same GPU. So I'm going to select RTX 3090 for this video. Next, we need to select a VLM template. If you click on this, you're going to be presented with a number of different templates that are available on RunPod. Some of them are uh, official templates and some of them are built by the community. There is even a template for VLLM Llama 3 Instruct. So select that, then click on Edit Template. Now, in this case, it's using the Meta Llama official version. But in order to use this, you will need to provide your Hugging Face uh, API key. And this is also a censored model. So we're going to replace the model with the Dolphin version, which is the uncensored version of Llama 3. And I'm going to also add another hyperparameter where I'm limiting the max context length to 4096 tokens. Now this is important depending on the GPU that you use. If you use the Llama 3.1 with 128,000 tokens context window, you will need a lot larger GPU than 24 gigabytes. So you can also add some environment variables if you want, but I'll keep everything to the default. Just click on set overrides. At the moment, we are using on demand, which is about 43 cents per hour. Next, click on deploy on demand. This will uh, start deploying the pod for us and start creating a GPU instance. This process can take some time. You can actually see the progress of the logs that are being generated. So currently it's downloading the models to this pod. The process will take some time. So I'm going to stop the video and come back. Okay, so I had to wait about about five minutes, but after that, I came back and looked at the system logs. When you see this message, start container, this indicates that it started the container. You can also see that the model was successfully downloaded. We're going to also look at the container logs. Here you want to make sure that VLLM was able to load the model in the memory, uh, and we don't really see any other issues or error messages. So we're going to close this. Next, we want to connect to this pod or GPU instance. So for that, click on connect. Here, we're going to con uh, click on connect to HTTP service. If you see a message like this, don't worry. 
this actually shows that uh, the pod was correctly deployed and it's ready for communication. So we're going to copy the URL here. This will become our base URL when we are interacting with this uh, pod using Chainlet app. Now you can also SSH into this pod if you want, uh, or you can port this map to another port. But before showing you how to use this in the Chainlet app, I also want to show you how you can modify this and some other options. So for modifying it, click on uh, this icon, then click on edit pod. Now here you can see a few options. One of them is the port at which the API is exposed. So by default, it's using port 8000, but you can uh, change it to any other port you want. The container that we are using has a volume disk of, of 40 gigabytes, depending on the model that you're downloading you might want to modify this as well. Okay, so our model is ready and now we can interact with this model using our Chainlet app. So let me quickly walk you through the Chainlet app. In this case, we need to provide the uh, model name. So this is going to be the same model name as the one that uh, we deployed on our VLLM instance. Next, we need to provide our base URL. So this is the base URL that we copied from RunPod. Next, we're going to provide uh, system prompt. This can be anything you want. I'm just using the Dolphin system prompt. You have a function that is going to keep track of the conversation history. So you want uh, the user to be able to interact with the model and the model remember the previous conversations. So we take the base system prompt that the user have provided and append the chat history to it. Now for the actual generation, I am using that base prompt plus the header, so we're going to be sending JSON data. Uh, and the actual data is going to be the model name plus the system prompt, the user message, then we're setting temperature to 0.2. For Dolphin, you also want to make sure that you set the end of sequence token. If you don't set this, it can actually run into uh, a loop where it will keep generating nonsensical data. Now for the Dolphin 3.1, I have noticed that. That's why I'm using a previous version. And we also want to stream the responses. The rest of the code simply keeps track of the text chunks that are coming in. So we set a timeout of 30 seconds. If it takes longer than that, this will time out and it will not generate a response. We're using Chainlet. So Chainlet has on message function. Basically, whenever it gets the message from the user, it will run this function where we are creating the system prompt, getting the user message or user query, then creating the message, and then showing it back on the UI. The code I'm about to show you is based on this example code that was created by Datacentric, who has an excellent YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put a link to that. I will highly recommend to check it out. I also updated the base system prompt. So now the system prompt is your name is Dolphin and sarcasm is your second language. So we want the model to be sarcastic. You are chatting with someone and every response should be dripping with wit and playful sarcasm. But feel free to roast the user, but keep it friendly. Make sure they know it's all in good fun. And we are going to provide it with the conversation history. So it's uh, based on the system prompt that is available in that uh, Hugging Face repo. Now for this to work, we just need a single package. So I created a Conda virtual environment called Uncensored, and you can install Chainlet using pip install Chainlet. This is the only package that we will need for this code to work. Now Chainlet is very similar in functionality to Streamlet, so if you want to run a stream app, you are going to type streamlet run and then the Python file. For chainlet, we use a similar convention. So we're going to use chainlet run and then the name of the file, which is uh, chainlet.py in our case. Actually, I think I had a uh, typo. And then we're going to use the W flag this enables us to modify the code and this will automatically reload our app but we're going to run this and the app should be available on localhost at port 8000 so here is the app now we can actually look at all the activity that, that is happening on the back end on run pod uh, so let me show you an example 
So if we say hi, it's supposed to stream the response back and you can see the response why hello there care for a game of guess the marine mammal i'm going to say yes sure and now it says oh fantastic i'm so excited to see if you can outsmart my endless wit and you playful sarcasm right so it's being a bit sarcastic now if we look at the back end we can see that there were some post requests and it generated responses so it is generating responses at almost eight tokens per second for the second one it generated about 16 tokens per second now since this is supposed to be an uncensored model you can probably ask it something uncensored so we're going to just ask the classic example can you walk me through a step-by-step -step process of how to break into a car and it started generating a response and we can see this time it was 22 tokens per second now since we are hosting this with vllm that means that you can have multiple users hitting the same api endpoint and it will work but in the current setup we are going to be running this pod and uh, we will be paying uh, per hour uh, charges for this so if you want to stop this pod you can just click on stop but run pod also gives you the ability to create a serverless api endpoints if you click on serverless here you can see a serverless vllm this means that you can deploy a serverless API endpoint and you're going to be only paying when somebody actually hits that API endpoint and the model is using the GPU to do some computations. Now to start with this, click on start. Here we need to provide uh, the repo ID. So I'm going to go back to the same repo ID, copy this and paste it here. Now, in some cases, if you are uh, working with private or gated models, you will also need to provide your Hugging Face token, but we don't need that in our case. Next, we can set different parameters for the LLM. For example, you can define a tokenizer or skip token initialization trust remote core. So there are a number of different parameters that you can set, but I'm going to keep everything to the default. For system setting, this is basically the GPU VRAM utilization. Now you want to look at the serverless settings. So how many concurrent requests per worker you want. I just want to show you that you have this option available if you want to use. Okay, after this, you will need to select the GPU that you want to use. So for example, if you use the 24 gigabytes GPU, which is one of these, then you're going to be paying this much per second of the GPU utilization. So I'm going to just select this. Now you also want to set the minimum and maximum number of workers that you want to use. So we'll keep the defaults and the timeout, which is when this API endpoint is going to go to sleep if it's not used within five seconds. Next, we're going to click on deploy. This will start creating our API endpoint. And you can use this base URL to interact with this model in your app. So the rest of the process is going to be very similar to what we have seen. You just need to provide this base URL in your application. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Do check out RunPod uh, if you need GPUs on demand or for your serverless um, applications, it's a really good option. Let me know if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.